interrupted you were, I, I think, uh, NAD boosters. Yes. Yeah, NAD boosters. Um, so, the, the, there are you know, four or five different NAD boosters one can choose. And I'll, I'll go with the, um, um, the most uh, uh, basic ones, the cheapest ones first, and then we'll go to the more, uh, the better ones and more expensive ones. <laughs> So, I, I think many people know that nicotinamide, sometimes called niacinamide, um, can be used to uh, boost NAD. We just finished the clinical trial, and we demonstrated that about 30% uh, of the participants uh, were able to elevate their NAD level. But again, the levels are not optimized. You do see an increase in about 30% of people, but even among these 30% of people, very few uh, have the levels above 40 micromole. So it works, it's very cheap. I mean, you can get it you know, for very little money. Uh, if you don't want to spend the, uh, the money on NAD boosting, taking some nicotinamide um, may not be a the better thing to do, okay? I, I want to get everyone's NAD up, so I want to give people the options. And the second one is uh, called uh, nicotinic acid, NA. Now, NA and nicotinamide are also called niacin. The terminologies are, are very confusing. Uh, some people uh, call only nicotinic acid or niacin, that's what I do. And, but some other people put in, uh, nicotinamide and the nicotinic acid or as a category in niacin or vitamin B3. And let, let's use the scientific terminology so no one is confused. And when I talk about niacin, I mean nicotinic acid or NA. NA is a very interesting uh, supplement because it's a, a FDA approved drug uh, to treat uh, high cholesterol levels. Um, but it takes a very high dose, usually above a thousand milligrams of NA. And, and NA can cause flushing. Um, it's not uh, toxic, it's not harmful, but it's, to many people it's numbing and, and uh, annoying. And so if you don't like the flushing feeling, you want to be careful with, with niacin. And we have uh, a number of individuals um, who uh, were taking very high doses of niacin for various purposes. And we found their NAD level very, very high, you know, over 100 micromole. And so niacin at a very high dose can increase NAD levels very efficiently in a very small subset of individuals. Um, but taking niacin at the low dose, um, usually around the 10 milligram, that's when many people start getting the flushing problem. And 10 milligram or somewhere near is not sufficient uh, to elevate NAD levels. And again, niacin is a very cheap supplement, uh, even though uh, as a drug, it costs 10 times more and the supplement is uh, very cheap. And uh, if someone doesn't want to spend the money uh, to elevate NAD, taking some niacin can be helpful. But you know, get get to a, get to a test to see whether it's working for you or not. And if you are taking very high doses of niacin, you have a, uh, you you have a chance. I don't know how big a chance it is. We don't have enough data to say that uh, with certainty whether your NAD level is going to be high or not. If you are taking high doses of niacin, get an NAD test to find out what's your NAD level. Then 
the two most popular form of NAD uh, supplements, um, precursor supplements, are nicotinamide, riboside, NR, and nicotinamide mononucleotide, or NMN. Both forms are quite effective. Uh, although the NR camp and the NMN camp have been debating for you know over a decade and I I think the debates uh, are usually not based on fact, but more based on feelings or uh, what camp you fall into. I happen to not fall into a uh, either camp. I I want to use uh, the data uh, to speak. We have the way more data on NMN than on NR, but we do have some data on NR. What I can tell you is for many people, the efficacy of using NMN and NR is comparable, similar. And obviously we don't have enough data on NR and we don't have uh, a very large controlled experiment to compare the two. The right experiment to uh, find out which one's better is through a large scale uh, crossover study, meaning that you know you, you take an NMN, you wash out, you take an NR in one group, and you take an NR first, wash out, and then take an NMN uh, in another group. And such a crossover uh, design with large numbers of people, um, we should be able to figure out what NMN is better, uh, what NR is better. And now, such experiment is very important, but I don't think it's absolutely necessary, at least for your audience. I think what's important for you and what's important for me is which one is working for you and which one is working for me, okay? And you can do it by testing. You can do it, ideally you want to test before and after taking uh, a supplement. And now this can be done. Now, theoretically, NMN can work better than R in terms of elevating NAD level if you look at a population because NMN is a one-step precursor to NAD, meaning you only need one enzyme to make NAD from NMN. But NR is a two-step precursor, meaning that you need the two enzymes to make NAD from NR. NR is converted to NMN first by NR kinase, and then NMN is converting into NAD. So imagine that you are deficient for NR kinase or NRK, and you take NR. You are not going to be able to make uh, NAD efficiently because you don't have enough uh, NR kinase to convert NR to NMN. Does it make sense, mm -hmm. right? So. There is a subset of people who may not be uh, optimum for the NR kinase. I don't know what's the percentage, but certainly such individuals do exist in the population. So if you look at the at population level, uh, my bet is NMN should work better than NR, but looking at the individual level, that may not be true. So that you know that that's kind of a balanced uh, way of looking at the NR versus NMN debate. The second point is both NR and NMN uh, do have biological functions in addition to uh, serve as a precursor for NAD. We don't know. We, we know both of them have biological functions, 
but we don't know uh, which one is more important. And so I think the debate between NMN and NR should go beyond, much beyond how they elevate uh, one's energy levels. We should also look at their biological functions. What I do know is NMN has very important functions. You know, when I take NMN, I can feel a difference within five minutes. And it, it's actually, you know, very, very potent. So my personal preference is NMN over NR. And um, I, I, I think because not only it can elevate NAD level in a higher proportion of individuals, um, but also has uh, many other biological functions uh, by itself. And this debate will, will continue. And my recommendation to consumers is, you know, find out by yourself, get an NAD test, try to see what other improvements you get uh, from NMN or NR. And we are now going to end this debate uh, anytime soon. It really depends on the person, I think.